In this lesson, we'll be setting up a new CAM program with a generative design part. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a new CAM setup, create a multi axis flow toolpath for three axes, and modify toolpath parameters. For this next lesson, we want to start with the supplied file, Generative Forming Tool Frame. From here, we're going to navigate to the Manufacture Workspace, and we're going to change the document units of our file to be inch and say OK. We're going to be exploring some more multi-axis flow toolpaths, but we need to get started by creating a CAM setup. We're going to go into Setup, and I'm going to set my stock based on a solid body. Then I'm going to go back to my coordinate system, and I'm going to change the Z orientation. It'll be based on the Z axis, but I need to flip and I can set the box point wherever I want. We're not going to be machining this part, we just want to focus on the toolpaths, so setting up the stock is just a formality. We just want to ensure that our coordinate system is right and that our Z is pointing up in the direction that you see on the screen. From here we're going to take a look at our multi-axis flow toolpath, and again we're going to take a look at it in a three-axis manner. I'm going to select a tool that's appropriate by going to All, selecting a ball end mill, and we'll again use the eighth inch ball end mill long. For our geometry, we're going to focus in just on a single face. I'm going to select this face here, and notice on the screen the red arrows that are showing the direction of the cut. If I click on the red arrows on the screen, we can change it from a V or a U orientation. I want to go into my Passes section, and I'm going to increase the number of passes to 10, and say OK. When we're dealing with a multi-axis toolpath like this multi-axis flow, but we're using it in three axes, we need to ensure that the toolpaths that are created are not negating some of those settings. So you can see that even though this face wraps around the part, there's an area where the tool can't get to in a three-axis operation. So this is exactly what we want to validate just to ensure that the tool motion is respecting the three-axis representation of the toolpath. We can change the parameters in this toolpath. For example, we can go into the passes and set it to be one direction. We can increase the number of stepovers if we need to get a better resolution on the part. And we can also adjust the tangential fragment distance so that it can extend past. In this case, I'll set it to 0.01 inches. We'll allow it to recalculate. We'll get an increased number of steps and we'll get a lot more rapid movements since it can only cut in one direction now. Also notice that it's extending slightly past the edge of our selected face. And then it's rounding using our linking parameters up and away using our rapid movement and going back. So there are a lot of different options that we can do with this toolpath for a three-axis cut. But the main reason we want to talk about multi-axis flow is because we want to talk about it in a multi-axis manner. Before we get into that, let's make sure that we save our file, then we can move on to the next step. 